it turns out when you come to Boulder, Colorado, some guys just ain't hard to find. And one of those guys would be Jace Brown because he found himself open, kind of, because he had a fight through pass interference to make the game-winning play and hooking up with Avery Johnson as the Cats come back and survive a disastrous loss that was right there in front of them against Colorado. 31-28, the final score. The Cats get the job done in Boulder, and they get their first Big 12 road win of the season. They tame this after-dark kick time, and there were some oddities. K-State had a rash of injuries on defense on one drive, and people are going to point to Shadur Sanders through for 388 yards. Yeah, he was phenomenal. Chris Kleiman said after the game, that's the best quarterback in the country. You're going to have to give a little bit of slack to K-State because, number one, Shadur Sanders is that good. And also, Jacob Parrish got hurt, left the game. Marquis Siegel had a serious injury. And then Justice James missed time. You also who, – who was the other one? that Keenan Garber yeah. missed a few snaps. Yeah, Keenan Garber missed some times. Like, K-State got pretty banged up on defense in an area where you absolutely needed them. Like this was not – they weren't spread out. You weren't losing linebackers. You weren't losing defensive linemen. Guys that you could throw at Colorado that they're, you know, have a weak spot on their offense. No, this was the most important part. Now Colorado also lost some guys. Travis Hunter got hurt, didn't come back for the second half. Jimmy Horn also got banged up in the game. So all things considered, I think both teams are going to look at this and say, we came out of it a little worse for wear, and K-State just ultimately made enough plays down the stretch. What what are your biggest takeaways from this game? Because at one point it kind of felt like, okay, K-State might kind of control this, move forward. They were scoring the touchdowns that they needed, but then things kind of took a turn for the worse. I, I think the biggest takeaway has to be the response. I mean, we saw – in, in Provo, when things didn't go well, it all kind of spiraled for K-State. Tonight kind of could have been the same kind of deal. Uh, whether or not you agree with K-State going forward on that fourth down, I, I lean more towards it was probably the right thing to do because that, that's a tough kick for Chris Tennant. It's a tough kick for anybody in that scenario. And if he misses, Colorado gets the ball like the f- case or the, their own like 42-yard line. So you're probably better off just going for it and seeing if you can get the first down. But you throw the interception, you allow the big return, you get the crowd way back into it because the, the crowd was really taken out of the game for a lot of the game because k was just able to control the clock. But then to come back in the first the first play, you take a shot play to Jace Brown, you overthrow it by probably half a step. Then you find DJ Giddens, and before we started recording, I said that k called the play that has always been undefeated, the, the, just – run DJ Giddens out there and everybody forgets that a running back is a legal receiver uh, because he got a huge play and then to come back and make an even bigger throw and a bigger play to Jace Brown that kind of feels like the world starting to take notice of Avery Johnson like that is the kind of play that can really spark a a run and and can really get things going and moving forward in a positive direction And, and the defense had faults they had they had a lot of faults tonight especially you're playing Zayshon Rich at corner who hasn't played a snap of defense all season. He's played in every game, but it's only been special teams. But you're playing him. You're playing guys that aren't really on the field most of the game, but they stepped up and made plays when it mattered on the last on the last drive. And Joel Clack can go argue with a wall. Keenan Garver has just as much right to the football as a Colorado receiver, and he turned and looked for the ball and went up and tried to make a play on it. And yes, there was contact, but Keenan Garver could could have also made the play, so I think that you, it's a good no call, and it, it feels kind of like the the Chiefs get all the calls things where one play happens and it, all of a sudden it becomes like a ref show instead of like how K State really responded. Yeah, and I think you you look throughout the game, both teams did certain things, committed their fair share of penalties. I mean, that, if we really want to dissect the officiating, Joel, because I know you're totally unbiased here, you have. No skin in this game whatsoever. I would imagine that because of how effective K-State was rushing the passer tonight, that there would probably be a lot more holds that weren't called that, you know, than what did. I think maybe, what, two holds were actually called in the game. Uh, in case one was offsetting. Yeah, and then K-State was pretty good at getting to Shadur Sanders, who ended the night with negative 50 rushing yards because of the sacks that he took in the game. The K-State pass rush was good. That's a moment, though, where you can look at Joe Klanderman in the defense and say, 
why did you kind of switch up what you were doing that was effective because they came out in the second half and they immediately went back to sending more blitzes and, and there you went. Colorado just made it pretty easy down the stretch. I, I think that there were some problems with, just with the injuries because there were times where K-State was running a four down with one linebacker and six DBs. And, and I think that it just got to a point where they didn't have enough defensive backs that they thought that they could play so that they couldn't do that, so they went back to the traditional 3-3-5 look. And Chris Kleiman said that after the game, that they most of the game they were going 6 DBs, but they ran out of guys. Like That's going to happen in road games. It's going to happen at home when you're trying to decide who do we actually trust in this position. So they were a little hamstrung by some of the things that took place tonight. We've also made it this far without talking about Avery Johnson because the offense was hamstrung in some ways tonight. Avery Johnson on the opening drive of the second half leaves the game as K-State is driving down the field, leaves the game because of a an injury on the left part of his midsection, and he has to leave. He goes to the locker room, and Taquan Roberson came into the game and performed masterfully. He took K-State down the field, made some really nice throws, was decisive with the football, and K-State was able to eventually score a touchdown on that drive, and that's the prime example of why K-State went out and got him in the offseason. He's played a bunch of football. He has the experience. And even bigger tonight because Jacob Knuth did not travel with the team. So Avery goes down. you got one guy right there. He has to perform. Taquan Roberson did that. And Avery Johnson then came back in the game, obviously made the plays that he did. And, and he threw for a lot of yards last week against Oklahoma – or two weeks ago against Oklahoma State. There could be an argument that tonight – was maybe the most impressive passing game of the season because of some of the throws that he made down the stretch. So, overall, what would you make of the quarterback situation? Yeah, I think that Avery Johnson, again, just continues to improve, and we're seeing that progressive growth that we talked about on Monday where you could see that there were a few times during the season so far where he has been just a step or two off. And even on the last drive, he was a step off on the first throw to Jace Brown, but to come back and respond... Uh, I can't remember who posted it because everything just happened so fast, was that the, the fun thing about Avery Johnson is that he makes those throws. He's going to bring that up. And now, but he makes those throws now every once in a while, but there will be a time where he makes those throws all the time. So once he gets to that consistency, uh, you're going to see a really, really special quarterback. And you took the words out of my mouth. That is why K-State went out when everybody said, why are they going after a transfer quarterback? Tonight was why. Take, they don't win that game without Taquan Roberson making a really, really good throw to Jace Brown on a third down play. And, and Roberson just looking so composed. Yeah. He had one incompletion in the time that he was out there, and, and the incompletion was a drop by Trace Bivey. Mm-hmm. So Taquan Roberson deserves a lot of flowers for how he played tonight in, in a pressure situation because, I mean, you always prepare for the moment and in going into the game, but I, I don't think that you ever really think that you're going to get in. Yeah. It was Shayon J. Raja from CBS was the one that had it. I, I saw that. I was going to bring that up because I thought that is the perfect example. And that's also good for K-State people to hear because that's not one of us guys. Like, look, try very hard to be subjective and everything, but sometimes people aren't going to buy it because we are K-State grads. And, like, at the end of the day, I'm not going to apologize for the fact that I want to see K-State be successful. I want to see them do well. That You're never going to get that yanked out of me. But it's good to see somebody on the national side that has that perspective and is able to kind of give that to everybody. So that's notable. And so I say K-State was limited on offense in some ways because they couldn't use quarterback run, which Colorado had been shredded by at points this season. And we saw it early on because Avery had a touchdown run where he did the, the prime dance afterwards. And another part of this game, DJ Giddens played – phenomenal once again he ends up with 182 yards on the night on 25 carries and that's even with him being a little bit banged up getting gassed and he was limited at points throughout the game and that kind of tied back what K-State could do offensively he had the one drop he struggled sometimes in in his pass blocking tonight but overall good night from him and the K-State offense came through when it mattered most coming back from what you talked about them going for it and it turned into an unfortunate interception because he gets bounced up in the air off of a hand and then Colorado takes it all the way down the field. That should be the lasting takeaway from this game. I know that there are parts that are frustrating, and again, not a clean game. K-State has things to work on to be better if they want to win next weekend in Morgantown and be a team that gets back to the Big 12 title game. Uh, 
I was going to say, my my final point here is that we kind of gone this whole time and haven't said anything about Brendan Mott. Bren, Brendan Mott is in contention to be Big 12 Defensive Lineman of the Year. I mean, he was unblockable tonight for probably three quarters of the game. Yeah. Yeah, the defense was good. They brought it. They, we saw what we wanted to see from, from them tonight. And overall, I think that you see this team, they fought back. They once again won a game that we have to sit here and ask ourselves, if K-State played this game last year, do they win it? The answer seems like no because we have a lot of evidence to suggest that they probably would not have come back to win the game. They didn't do it against Missouri. They didn't do it against Texas. They, they didn't do it against Iowa State at home. They bounce back, same as they did in that game against Tulane on the road, where they were able to fight through some stuff, and at the end of the day, they made the most impactful plays, and they got players that are looking more and more like they're starting to make those flashes turn into long-term exposures, and now it's about this being who you are every night. DJ Giddens, what he was tonight, that's him every night now. You don't have to worry about that. Avery Johnson, again, it's those flashes turning into exposures and then whatever comes from there. But this is a good win for K-State tonight because Colorado, they deserve a lot of credit. They took a lot of crap last year from me, everybody else. They are a better team this year, and they fought through a lot. And who knows what it means for the future, but for this season, Colorado is a tough team, and there are going to be a lot of teams in the Big 12 that come to Folsom Field and don't get a win, especially if you put them in the situation that K-State was late in the game. But the Cats took care of business, and they won tonight 31-28, to in large part thanks to a 50-yard touchdown pass as the game was in its closing moments from Avery Johnson to Jace Brown. And the K-State defense secondary had its struggles, and they had their injuries, but they stepped up when needed, and K-State was able to kneel it out in front of a really strong purple contingent in Boulder. Hope everybody stayed safe. I hope all those Colorado fans that you know were telling us that we're stupid and all this other stuff can have a nice night and shut the hell up for another year. I hope that they stub their toe on a Lego tonight. Yeah, we're tired of hearing of you. Sit down, take your loss, go cry. We'll see you later. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching kstateonline.com. More coverage of the Cats coming up throughout the rest of the weekend over at On3 in KSO.